Many years ago, in a land far, far away, there once lived a young Contesina who, as is customary for such ladies, received a gift of a gorgeous skein of undyed silk thread, perfect for the confection of fine undergarments and elegant embroidery. In her rash enthusiasm to create, she located an end and hastily started tugging. Within mere moments, the carefully choreographed coil had disintegrated into a grotesque Gordian knot that even mighty Alexander's wily sword could not have set in twain. A metaphor-laden monstrosity worthy of display in any gallery of modern art. To this very day, she is still harvesting lengths of thread from the tumultuous tangle, hopeful that, someday, the last shall be consumed and her penitential labor may find its end. These days, our more mature Contessa regularly requisitions large quantities of silk floss to satisfy her voracious appetite for silk embroidery and narrow wear weaving. And in the intervening years, she has learned the wisdom of the swifter and the winder, of the bobbin, and of clever storage methods, of leveraging the labor of others. Watch on for a step-by-step -step guide to not creating your own monstrosity of modern art. Today, we're going to talk about the first step in embroidering, which is preparing your materials. So the reason we're doing this video at all is actually this gorgeous dress. This is actually a commission. I'm actually getting paid to do the thing I love. It's a dream world. Anyway, my client has this gorgeous designer dress and it has this beautiful embroidery all over it, but at the corner under the armpits, unfortunately, there's been some discoloration from some oils that were utilized for freshening. And so we are actually going to, I am going to be, there's no we, I, the creative Contessa, I'm going to be doing embroidery to cover up the discoloration. Well, for that, I need silk embroidery floss to match this. And I have some, but it comes in skeins like this. So today we're going to talk about how we can go from a skein like this to useful silk thread and not sad, tragic ball of wasted silk. First step is preparing your bobbin. This is a vintage thread bobbin. You can find these in pretty much any antique store these days in large quantities. You might not have even realized what these were, but once you know what they are, you're going to see them everywhere. It's sort of like a curse. They, they haunt you once you notice them. So the thing is that these are generally decades upon decades, if not a century or more old, and so they're covered in industrial grime. So we have to clean them. For that, all you need is um, some acetone. This is nail polish remover that I had for other purposes, but I don't really need it because I don't use nail polish, so it's gonna get used for this. This one contains nourishing coconut, avocado, and olive oil, so I'm hoping that might actually nourish the wood a little bit. Hey, side benefit. So to do so, we're going to take our cotton ball, and I actually repurposed this cotton from one of my vitamin bottles, so sustainability for the win. And you're just going to put some of your acetone, soak it up on your cotton, and then scrub it up dub. Okay, so <laughs> as I was attempting to use my cotton ball to clean this, we noticed that there's a lot of burrs in this particular wood. Were I to actually apply that smooth, silky silk to this, it would tear it up. And we don't want that embroidery floss needs to shine. So good thing to check before you put your silk thread on it. So we have another one. Let's give this one a try. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed the musical interlude of me cleaning at high speed. And as you can see, hopefully you can see, this is no longer white, so effort well spent. Next step is unwinding the thread. For that, we need something called a swifter. 
You may have seen objects like this in secondhand shops or even in craft stores. We found this gorgeous hand carved all wood one in our local antique store, it's, but it's not, this is, no, there's no way this is an antique. Anyway, so to use it, you put it on your table or on a surface. We like using our all purpose handy dandy Ikea super table. And you screw it into place and then you use this, works kind of like an umbrella, right? <laughs> or not. There we go. Yes. Okay. So it works like an umbrella and you have the screw at the bottom that you then tighten once you reach the level that you would like it to stay, except you have to actually move it up <laughs> and then it will stay like so. Now you want it to be a little bit more narrow than the width of your skein so that the skein is loose-ish when you put it on and then you prop it up to make it taut. Right. So for now we're going to put it roughly like this and hope that that's an appropriate level. So swifter, see, it swifts around. I actually have no idea if that's the etymology of why this thing is called that, but I think it's fun. So handy dandy swifter, you can get these at a Michaels craft store. Um, but like I said, we lucked out and got this gorgeous all wood hand carved one for 20 something dollars at our local antique store. So keep your eyes open. Next step is actually unwinding your thread. So there are lots of plastic options out there, but you know, Creative Contessa all about sustainability and plastic is just a disgusting petrochemical product anyway. So thankfully, way back in the day before plastic took over our lives, they made such objects as this out of metal and leather. So this is in fact an antique thread winder. So the bobbin actually goes on there and then it actually winds <laughs> like so. Okay, but so I'm not gonna hold it like this while we do this, that would be insane. For that, I have an all purpose handy dandy stool. You can probably come up with some other solution for this, but we found, we found that our stools you can probably come up with other, some other solution for this instead of just looking at my midriff. Uh, but we found that our bar stools work the best. So a note that you can buy this, objects like this, you can find them in some antique stores. I found this on eBay from an antique vendor in Canada. It, for me, it was absolutely worth the cost of postage. So we're going to actually place this on the far end of the stool for several reasons. One that gives you lots of stool to counterweight it. This is heavy, it's made, of, it's made of steel, possibly cast iron actually. But two, I'll show you in a moment, once I get this all fixed on, you wanna make sure it's nice and tight and as far up as, onto the stool leg as you can get it. Okay, it's tight. And if you need to, oh, there's no room on mine, you could put a little piece of leather or something to add as extra padding there. But by putting it all the way on the end, then my hand isn't running into this part, right? So now we've got it all set up. So we have our thread winder, we have our swifter, we have our nice clean bobbin. So there's just one step left. Okay, here's your mid-video gratuitous kitty shot. And also a reminder, if you're enjoying this content, don't forget to like and subscribe. Those likes really, really do matter if you would like me to continue making this content. Um, ignore the not so tiny tiger that lives in our house. So like and subscribe. And if you would like to support me more actively, please do become a patron on my Patreon page. I promise you lots of really neat extras in addition to fantastic continued content. Last step, and this is an important step, but the most important 
part of this step is starting correctly. So clean, fresh pair of gloves. Could be reusable rubber gloves if you have them. If you have really nice, smooth leather gloves, maybe. Soft, silky gloves would work too, but the purpose of this is to prevent my fingers from snagging on the very, very silky, very, very fine, unspun silk embroidery floss or minimally spun, very minimally spun. It's two ply loose spin, which means that it's very likely to snag and pull and then you end up with knots and snags in what should be beautiful, silky, smooth, light reflective silk. Okay, so clean gloves on. We have our bobbin. You can put it there. We're, we're going to actually do something else with that in a moment. Now let's talk about our skein, our hank of silk floss. So there's a way to open this correctly and there's a way that will lead to tears and frustration and much joy for your kitty because if you do it the wrong way, it's only gonna be good as a kitty toy. So, of course, it's twisted on itself, counter twisted through the spinning. And so basically what we have to do is we have to, you'll see, spun, 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 and then there's half of it that actually loops down through here, right? So we need to pull that part that is hanging down at the end of the loop out carefully. And again, that's why we have the gloves so that we don't snag anything. Yay, mission successful. Okay, now, we're going to unwind, we're just going to grab it by the two ends and carefully unwind it. And you will feel that it will untwist itself. Now you don't want to untwist it too far before you find the loop at the end and you want to make sure that you get cleanly through this loop so that you're not creating little mini loops like so. And now I'm just going to gently open it up like so. Okay, and then I'm going to take it and put it on the Swifter. And actually, I think I'm going to have my assistant come and make the Swifter a little more narrow. Okay, so this is best done with two people, I will openly admit. It's very fussy with this kind of thread. Okay, so then once you, someone holds it on, you open the Swifter until it is at a nice taut amount and then you screw it into place like so. Okay, now there is, there is a thread binding all of this together and actually it's going to be bound together in multiple parts. This particular hank is actually consists of like 10 little mini hanks. And so you need to basically use scissors to cut the little knots that are binding it one at a time. So that, that actually is good because it means you would, might only end up ruining one of them if one of them goes awry and the others are still perfectly fine. So we're gonna take our handy dandy scissors. First, I'm going to cut the knot that's binding them all together. That's in a different thread in a different color, so that makes it easy to spot. All right, and then I'm just gonna pick one of the other ones and I'm going to cut the binding knot on that one. And you'll probably notice that some are easier to get to because they're more on top than the others. And you should cut that one free. Okay, having done that, I now have one, one thread that is loose and it is ready to come out. So, now we're gonna take our bobbin and we are going to actually wind it. But, of course, I have better things to do with my time. So this is the part where I call in my handy dandy live-in assistant slash husband slash cameraman slash video editor <laughs> to come and do this part while I go do more important things that involve more creative brain power than this particular process. So one thing I will say is that you can do this winding while watching any particular entertainment of choice or listening to a musical performance of choice. I do recommend that you keep your feline friends out of the room because they might think you're trying to frolic with them. And that brings us back to the Trail of Tears. Okay, so time for the unwinding. And let the winding begin.
Et voila, like magic, it's done. It feels like it didn't take me any effort at all. So now, but first, let me show you a storage trick for these spools. So this handy dandy little rack is actually a plate rack. And this one was purchased actually while we were in Korea at Daiso, which is a Japanese things store, household goods. Uh, they actually have Daiso's now in America in certain parts, so you might be able to go to Daiso and get one of these, but you can also get them at many secondhand stores, antique stores, etc., etc. Nice thing about it, it's wood, so no more plastics. You know how I love harping on petrochemical products. And these spools fit perfectly on it. So handy dandy, sustainable, biodegradable storage method that also has some nice aesthetic elegance about it. Okay, well now I guess it's time to get to the actual embroidery project. See you later. spoiled. Don't act like we never feed you. You get plenty of food. My goodness. <laughs> His butt's hanging off the back of the table. <laughs> He doesn't care. It's worth it. 